Welcome back to the second lecture for Unit 14 in Developmental Psychology, Lifespan Development. Now, this is where we left off with gender hurdles in the last lecture. So let's continue now with the slide on interventions. What you do in your teens affects your health in your 40s, and what you do in your 40s affects your health in your 60s, and so forth. It's never too late to turn your health around. Research has shown that old people stuck in a wheelchair can get out of the wheelchair many times with very little but consistent exercise. So what should you do to improve your future health? Well, give up smoking now and alcohol as well. Start exercising. Eat more vegetables, fruits, and nuts. Visit your doctor for preventative care. Men, get your PSA level tested before you turn 40. And women, get your annual mammogram from the age of 39. If your family has a history of cancer for either one of those, then start earlier, start at 30. I've heard the pain and horror stories about mammograms, but it turns out the larger your breasts are, the less the pain. And my wife had no pain. At any age, you increase your odds of living longer by developing more healthy habits. Vision changes started in the 40s, and they will continue to deteriorate in old age. By age 40, our lenses is hardening and clouding. Glasses or possible surgeries are required. Presbyopia is trouble seeing close objects. That's a milestone in aging successfully. And older people have trouble seeing in dim light, judging distances at night, glare, and seeing some colors as vividly, or even at all. I remember there is a beautiful colored rocks at the Smithsonian Museum as a child. They glow in black light, and you push a little button to turn the black light on. I took my cousin to the museum when I was older, and we stood in front of the display, and I pushed the button to turn on the black light. Nothing. I could not see any difference. But my cousin, on the other hand, was like, cool, do it again, do it again. So my eyes, as an adult, my eyes were no longer responding to that wavelength of light. Some of these problems can be successfully overcome, although some mental anguish over growing older may ensue. I had eagle vision as a teenager, it's 2010, and now I have to wear glasses just to have 2020. I don't like to read because it reminds me that my body is failing every time I have to put my glasses on. Some vision problems can be fixed or adapted to. Some curable vision problems include cataracts, which is a cloudy, dirty lens. Cataracts are curable with surgery. Presbyopia, which is also known as being farsighted because you can see things far away but not close up, can be adapted to with glasses and temporarily cured with some surgeries. And then myopia, which is also known as being nearsighted because you can see things close up but not far away, can be adapted to with glasses and tempor temporarily cured with some surgeries. While we can compensate for the three issues that were just described, the following three problems can cause irreversible damage. Although these issues can be stabilized and the progress slowed, they cannot be cured. These include macular degeneration, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy. All three of these cause irreversible damage to the retina, which is called optic nerve damage. Hearing impairments may be worse than vision problems. Loss of vision limits our contact with the visual world, but loss of hearing disconnects us from society. Hearing problems are very common in later life. Hearing loss affects about one in three people over the age of 70. Men are more likely than women to lose hearing, mainly because men work in noisier occupations without protection. However, women are getting more into the noisy occupations. Age-related hearing problems have doubled since 1970. This is most likely due to the amount of noise in our environment, some of which is within our ability to control, like earbuds. 
Presbycusis is the term that describes age-related hearing loss. This loss is especially evident in the higher pitches. This is caused by atrophy of hearing receptors in the inner ear. So be aware that the older we get, the more background noises can overpower the sounds we want to hear. And since overall noise in society is increasing, we need to be aware of and protect our own hearing and recognize the issues and work with elderly people in their proper person environment fit. Any noise over 85 decibels will cause ear damage and late hearing loss. Here are the average decibel ratings of some familiar sounds. The humming of a refrigerator is 45 decibels. Normal conversation is 60 decibels. Noise from heavy traffic, city traffic, is 85 decibels. Motorcycles, 95 decibels. And an MP3 player at maximum volume is 105 decibels, which is why I mentioned earbuds in the last slide. If you are walking down the hall listening to music, and I can hear the music coming out of your ears, then you are doing damage to your ear and you will reap the pain later in life. Sirens are 120 decibels and firecrackers and firearms are 150 decibels. Now, your distance from the source of the sound and the length of time you are exposed to the sound are also important factors in protecting your hearing. A jackhammer is 120 decibels at one meter distance, more if you're closer. The gas powered weed whacker is 100 to 105 and they're right next to your ear. So a good rule of thumb is to avoid noises that are too loud, too close, or last too long. That's good advice that I didn't take in my youth, in my college years from 1976 to 1983 in Athens, Georgia. I used to go to a bar called The Warehouse to listen to a bar band called REM and another one that showed up once in a while called the B-52s. I used to stand right next to the speakers on the right side of the stage, and my right ear cannot hear as well as my left ear today. Let's talk about some hearing interventions. Make sure you choose your social settings with care. Since background noises interfere with hearing, don't go to crowded, noisy locations with older people. Don't go to lunch during your peak hours when noises are going to be the worst. Avoid places where the sound bounces like concrete rooms. Install carpeting in the house to muffle sound background noises. Get rid of noisy appliances in favor of quieter ones. Talk directly to the person. We tend not to think about facing a person when we talk to them. You need to project directly to the person with hearing loss. My wife tends to talk with her back to me and I cannot understand what she's saying. Have the older person, and that's I'm telling them, I'm saying I'm an older person, have the older person with hearing loss get a hearing aid too. No, I haven't gotten one yet myself. But remember, just like glasses, it's a reminder that your body is failing you. Don't use elder speak with older people. Uh, elder speak is slow, elongated speech, similar to infant directed speech used with little children. This is especially degrading to the elderly. Hi, grandma, are you okay today? Don't do that. <laughs> Protect your hearing no matter how young you are to decrease your hearing issues later in life. When it comes to motor performance, elderly people are slow. Slowness puts the elderly out of sync with the rat race world. This produces annoyance in this rat race crowd. Older people hold us back. They slow us down. They make us late. Slowness in the elderly is caused by slow reaction time. Reaction time is the speed at which a person can respond to stimuli, and they don't respond as fast. Some elderly have osteoarthritis, where joint cartilage wears away, so it's painful to move. With the bone loss in osteoporosis, where you lose calcium in the bones, the bones become brittle and easily break. So the elderly are moving slower because if they fall, it causes serious problems. 
women are very susceptible to osteoporosis. Hip fractures are especially dangerous to elderly people because hip fractures are the primary cause for nursing home placement. And when there is nursing home placement with a hip fracture, there is a good chance you will never get out. So what can we do to improve motor performance or guard against issues caused by poor motor performance? First, stay active. Keeping active slows the advance of the ADL problems. Remodel your home to reduce tripping hazards. Increase lighting and install low pile carpeting. Shag carpeting is a tripping hazard. Put in grab bars wherever one sits or lays down to help the person pull themselves back to a standing position and to balance themselves. Guard against falls. In Europe, elderly wear a hip guard to protect against breaks caused by falls. It is an inflatable belt. This is similar to a balloon around your hips. When they fall, the air cushions the fall. Put shelves within easy reach and replace hard to open doors with doors that open easily. Driving in the elderly years can be frightening for everyone on the road. Some elderly are slow, hard of hearing, and have bad vision, but they still can and want to drive. Closer access to their needs would require less driving time and better mass transit systems would reduce the need for the elderly to drive at all. In Syracuse, New York, my uncle Zachary Taylor never drove anywhere because mass transit got him everywhere he needed to go. If they are insistent on driving, the elderly may require special driving tests to determine their neural deficits. This is not a current practice. Instead of a simple memory exam to acquire a new license, maybe they should be given a hands-on driver's exam every time they renew. And the renewal process may have to be repeated every year instead of every five years because mental and physical declines are on a logarithmic scale, meaning they increase faster with age. Any traffic area that requires speed in cognitive decision making should be revamped for the elderly. For instance, yellow lights may need to have extended times. The young can make the mental calculation of speed and distance and time when the light turns yellow, but the elderly are slower, and by the time they decide if they should floor it or stop for the yellow light, it's too late and they're running a red light directly into cross traffic. Left turns without signals may need to have signals. Exit ramps need to be extended to give the elderly more time to merge. Bigger signs, better lighting, and other simple changes would benefit many elderly drivers and would certainly benefit the rest of us. The elderly could keep their independence and their self-esteem longer with very simple changes. But governments are run by people who do not have these cognitive deficits most of the time. And they do not think about the issues involved or want to spend the money on something that has no traction with their constituents. As the population gets older, however, that may well change. I'm getting close to the maximum amount of time for this presentation, so I'll end it here and talk with you again in the next section.